Hello, my fellow hirelings of House Telvani. I'm Neloth, and because it's spooky season, it's time to make a much darker build than any I have done before. Not that there's much competition. So, let me introduce to you my Soul Reaper build. This character grew up on the streets of Wayrest and was taken in by a necromantic cult where he became fascinated by soul gems and trapping the souls of others, especially people. As he feasts on the flesh and souls of others, he will truly become an abhorrent monster that is no better than a bear or a troll. Before I begin, let me state as always that there are timestamps down below to make navigating this video much easier. And also note that this character should be seen as a template, and you should feel free to make any changes that you wish. And now, let us go reaping with the Soul Reaper. Starting with the backstory. The Soul Reaper was born an orphan in the city of Wayrest. Because he was an orc, the Reaper was bigger and stronger than most of his fellow orphans, but he was also neglected and never even considered for adoption, unlike many of the Breton children in the orphanage. Because of this, he resented many of the children in the orphanage with the exception of one other child, a very skinny Khajiit boy with black fur and red eyes who also shared his disdain for the other children. The Reaper and the Khajiit got along very well, with the Khajiit proving to be mentally gifted while the Reaper was very physically gifted. As they grew up, the Reaper and the Khajiit became more and more inseparable, but also became more and more vicious to the other children, going from light pranks to violent bullying. Because of this, the headmistress of the orphanage was forced to kick the two boys out of the orphanage and into the streets. With nowhere to go, the Reaper and the Khajiit made their home in the sewers of the city, killing rats for food, and drinking the sewage water to quench their thirst. They both became rather malnourished and were slowly dying, until one day, they were approached by a robed figure who offered them each an apple. After giving them both apples, the robed figure offered them an accord. They could either remain in the sewers and die in filth, or they could follow the mysterious figure and join them, never to go hungry again. The Reaper looked to the Khajiit, who eagerly agreed, and so they followed the figure deeper into the sewers, opening numerous secret pathways until they entered a massive cave which featured a large black and red structure, a Daedric Temple. The robed figure revealed her face, and she was an imperial woman who was very beautiful but bore many scars across the left side of her face, which were strangely symmetrical, as if self-inflicted. The woman said she belonged to an ancient necromantic order called the Order of the Black Worm, who served the Worm King Manamarco and the Daedric Prince of Domination, Molag Bal. The Reaper and the Khajiit were inducted into the Order and worked exceptionally well together, becoming adept necromancers. The Khajiit focused on magic, and the Reaper focused on martial skills. However, the Reaper also grew disturbingly fascinated with trapping souls and using them for enchanting. When the Soul Reaper killed animals and even people, he would always cast a Soul Trap spell whenever possible and always feeling a sort of euphoric rush, like a warm bath after hours in the field, or eating a delicious meal for the first time in weeks. As they became older, the Khajiit wanted to put his skills to the test, and he wanted to go to Skyrim where there was a great many Nordic tombs perfect for necromancers. The Reaper came along to stay with his companion, but also because he wanted to visit the College of Winterhold, where he heard of a conjuration master who had a knack for trapping souls named Finnis Gester. They made their way through the mountains and into the Pale Pass, 
where they were caught between a conflict between two large forces. The Reaper and the Khajiit tried to stand their ground. However, the Khajiit was killed almost immediately, an arrow right between the eyes, and the Reaper was brought down by multiple arrows in his legs and eventually fell unconscious. When the Reaper woke up, he was on a cart headed for Helgen. And you know the rest. And now for the role-playing. The Soul Reaper is a morally evil character. However, he won't start off slaughtering and soul-trapping everyone he sees. He may be a vicious necromancer, but he is still currently human. However, over time, once you have soul-trapped enough people, feasted on enough flesh, and spoken to enough Daedra, you will become an absolute menace to society. When the Soul Reaper escapes Helgen, he is going to be very disoriented after seeing a dragon and angry at the death of his friend. He won't be starting the main quest immediately, not really caring for either Raylof or Hadvar, and will instead be making his way through Skyrim alone as a mercenary, helping people only for coin and also practicing his necromancy in his free time. Because of this, the Soul Reaper will join the Companions for Money and the College of Winterhold to learn more about conjuration and soul gems from Finnis Gester, and those questlines can be played out at your leisure. However, I would recommend completing the companion storyline, or at least becoming a werewolf, before progressing to the more darker side of this character. The turning point for the Soul Reaper will be when he discovers the Dawn Guard and their fight against the vampires. He will be less interested in the actual Dawn Guard, but very intrigued at the vampires and how they are undead and immortal beings who are known to have an intrinsic understanding of necromancy. When the Soul Reaper rescues Serana and given the choice to become a pure blood vampire, he will accept the gift gladly, believing that becoming a vampire will give him more power and a deeper understanding of necromancy like never before. After becoming a vampire and completing the Volcahar questline, I would also recommend joining the darker factions like the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood. However, when playing these quests, make sure to behave like a brutish thug who avoids stealth. After all, you're not a sneaky assassin, you fight head on. This means kill people in the Thieves Guild even when you're not supposed to. You may lose out on some pay, but money will not be a primary concern with this build. Also, with the Dark Brotherhood, always approach your victims and say the most sadistic dialogue options available to you. Then proceed to cleave them in half, or have an undead minion do the slaughtering for you. Just remember to always capture their souls. You may get high bounties in certain cities, but I feel that this can add to the roleplaying as you become a true terror against all of Skyrim, but again, make sure you wait to do that until later in the game. The Soul Reaper should also enlist his services in the Civil War. Not because he has any allegiances for the Imperials or the Stormcloaks, but rather to enjoy the bloodshed and the mass amounts of souls that can be absorbed. It's up to you on which side to join, but keep in mind that the Empire doesn't hold any heavy hatred towards necromancers, and has even employed necromancers on more than one occasion. The Stormcloaks, however, could also be sided with to sow chaos and to take on a large establishment like the Empire. Whoever you side with, just remember that you can also slaughter your fellow comrades with very little repercussions. So, go crazy. Now, you can avoid the main quest line to Skyrim altogether if you wish, as the story does make you out to be more of a hero than a villain. However, I believe the story is intrinsic to the character because as the Dragonborn, you are taking the souls of dragons. You can also do some horrible things like kill Parthenax and absorb his soul. You are the Soul Reaper, after all. Now, the Dawn Guard DLC is essential to this build to become a vampire and have access to Dernavir and the Soul Tear Shout, but the Dragonborn DLC could also be done to acquire knowledge from Hermaeus Mora himself. 
Speaking of Daedra, you will want to do all of the Daedra quests, and the more sinister, the better. Especially the Molag Ball quest, which I would recommend aiding him in as it will be reminiscent of the Soul Reaper's time with the Worm Cult. Another essential Daedra quest will be Azura's quest in order to corrupt her star to get the Black Star. This will make stealing souls become so much easier and cost effective, and should be done as early as possible in the playthrough. The last Daedra quest will be Namira's to get access to Namira's ring, and will allow you to become a cannibal and eat those you have slain. I like to roleplay that you aren't just feasting on flesh, but also on the souls of your victim, truly personifying the Soul Reaper aesthetic. When you find yourself aiding citizens or not being a morally evil character, just remember that the Soul Reaper is not above manipulation, deceit, and betrayal. So, if you want to help out Bully take a shipment to Markarth, that is okay, but you can always extract his soul as a bonus reward later. If you have the Winter Sun mod, I would highly recommend worshipping either Molag Ball or Manamarco. I would personally recommend worshipping Molag Ball, as you will literally interact with him face to altar and become a part of a vampire clan that worships him. When it comes to housing, I have two recommendations. The Winstad Manor is a piece of land that can be purchased in Morthal, and the location and aesthetic works very well. I would also recommend the Creation Club house called Bloodchill Manor, which is perfect for any vampire and is quite cozy, but keep in mind you will have to go through two loading screens to get in. There is also the Gallows Hall Creation Club house, which is a necromancer-themed lair. However, I feel that the place fucking sucks, but maybe you would enjoy it far more than I. For companions, you will mostly be using undead followers, but I would also recommend having Serana tag along as you are both vampires. I would also highly recommend Karjo, the only Khajiit companion in the game. The Soul Reaper may take him along as a reminder of his old necromancer ally he knew almost his entire life. Just remember when playing this character to soul trap as many people as possible and behave as an absolute menace to society. Now for the race, stats, and standing stone. So I made the Soul Reaper an orc, because orcs are great warriors and I wanted to have an outcast-like aesthetic. However, you can reasonably have the Soul Reaper be any race, and also any gender. For stats, you will want to invest with a ratio of 1 in Magicka, 3 in Health, and 1 in Stamina. While the Soul Reaper will be using a great deal of Conjuration, that is the only magic school that will really be utilized. And once you combine enchanted items with Fortify Conjuration and Fortify Magicka, you will find magic investment becomes much a waste. So once you reach 200 Magicka, I would focus only on health and stamina. For standing stones, I would absolutely go with the Ritual Stone. Resurrecting five dead bandits and having them gang up on the bandit chief is an absolute blast, and it also fits the aesthetic and role-playing of this character, further increasing his necromantic powers. And now for the skills and perks. The Soul Reaper will be utilizing the skills Two-Handed, Conjuration, Heavy Armor, Restoration, Enchanting, and Smithing. I will now go over what perks I would recommend having in each skill at around level 40, and then explain my reasonings, however, some won't really need much of an explanation. For two-handed, you will want to get all levels in Barbarian, Champion Stance, Great Critical Charge, and Devastating Blow. This will be the main weapon skill of the Soul Reaper and will utilize his two-handed weapons in a horrible way to inspire terror amongst his foes. And also sprinting in with an attack and chopping off heads is just fucking sick. For Conjuration, you will want to get Novice to Expert Conjuration, Necromancy, Dark Souls, and Twin Souls. 
These perks should be obvious for a necromancer character. We want to be able to cast Soul Trap for a low cost at early levels, and cast Summoning Undead spells more effectively at higher levels. For Heavy Armor, we will just want to have 5 levels in Juggernaut. The Soul Reaper won't really need any more investment, because he is already a walking tank with his numerous allies, but additionally, the hood we wear is a clothing item, and will negate most of the other heavy armor perks. However, if you want to replace the cool looking hood with a more practical heavy helmet like the Dragonbone Helmet, you could invest more in heavy armor. Restoration will be utilizing the perks Novice and Apprentice Restoration, Restoration Dual Casting, Recovery, Respite, Regeneration, and the very powerful Necromage perk. This skill is mainly for support and used mostly in emergencies. Some passive perks like Recovery that increases Magicka Regen will also be useful, but most importantly is the Necromage perk, which to briefly summarize, when you are a vampire and acquire the perk, all spells are effective against the undead, including you if you are a vampire, which this build is. In Enchanting, you will want to acquire all five in Enchanter, Insightful Enchanter, Corpus Enchanter, and Extra Effect, as well as Soul Squeezer and Soul Siphon. Soul Squeezer and Soul Siphon are simply just for aesthetic purposes, so they aren't super needed if you're trying to conserve perk points. The other perks should be pretty obvious. We will be Enchanting, so we need those perks. Finally is Smithing. We will want to get Steel Smithing all the way to Dragon Smithing, and also Arcane Smithing. The goal is to get Dragon Smithing for the armor we use in this build, but the other perks will be helpful in the early to mid game. Arcane Enchanting is also great to temper the unique weapons of this build that I will go into now. For weapons, the Soul Reaper will be using two handed greatswords. One of them is Umbra, added in the Anniversary Edition to Skyrim. Not only does this sword fit the aesthetic of the Soul Reaper and have a very interesting story, but it also has a Soul Trapping enchantment, which is perfect for the Soul Reaper, making Soul Trapping all the more efficient. The other weapon is added in the Anniversary Edition as well, and it is the Shadow Rend Greatsword. It is a powerful weapon with an enchantment that doesn't exactly fit the build, but the dark look of the weapon and the dark hue it emits whenever you unsheathe it and swing it is just so fucking beautiful and fits the build perfectly. If you do not have the Anniversary Edition to Skyrim, don't worry because I would recommend switching two-handed for one-handed and using the Mace of Molag Ball. For armor, the Soul Reaper will be utilizing a full set of Dragon Plate armor, with the exception of the head, which will use the Masked Necromancer's Hood added in the Anniversary Edition to Skyrim, which can be found in Ingvild's Throne Room. You could also use the Dragon Plate Insulated Armor, which is also added in the Anniversary Edition, however I personally feel the armor doesn't fit the character all that well. For jewelry, the necklace will be up to you, but I would recommend the Bone Hawk Amulet enchanted with whatever you want. The easiest way to find this amulet will be in Lord Harkon's room in a locked glass container. And for the ring, we will be using Namira's ring, as I mentioned in the roleplaying, so we can get access to cannibalism, so we can eat the flesh of our fallen foes. In previous builds, I used to tell you explicitly how to enchant your armor, but I don't want to do that anymore. Instead, I believe you the player should do that yourself to make the build truly your own. Also, I feel like it's a waste of time for me to do so, so yeah. And now for the spells and shouts. For spells, the Soul Reaper will be really into Conjuration, primarily using Soul Trap at early levels, however, conjuring whatever creatures you have on hand is also advisable. Just make sure to use Undead Summons more than Atronach Summons. 
summon zombie spells, the conjuration tomes in the soul cairn, as well as the conjuration spells added in the anniversary edition will be fitting, especially the skeleton champion and the fabled bone colossus. The only other spells outside of Conjuration that will be cast is any Restoration spells in Emergencies. However, you will likely find many health potions in your travels, and eating people also restores your health, so you shouldn't have to use spells in Restoration that often. Now for Shouts. There are actually quite a few Shouts in Skyrim that work very well for necromantic characters. Drain Vitality, Marked for Death, Summon Dernevere, and Soul Tear will all be good options to use consistently in combat, with the exception of Dernevere who should be summoned in much larger scale fights like in the Civil War. And now for the playstyle and combat. Now that we have everything all together, how exactly will this character be behaving in combat? Well, the playstyle is pretty simple. Throw some summons before engaging in combat, pull out your heaviest sword, hopefully Umbra, and go to town on those motherfuckers. And make sure to use the shouts I already mentioned in combat as well. I promise it will be much more fun, so please don't forget because I consistently do. Also, make sure to use the Ritual Stone to its fullest capabilities by slaying multiple lower level enemies and then activating the power to have a full army at your disposal. On top of your undead allies, Karjo or Serana, and an undead looking dragon will be very helpful in combat. And I briefly went over this in the roleplay section, but I'll reiterate it. At higher levels, when you inevitably get caught murdering people for the Dark Brotherhood, never surrender or pay a fine. And just massacre all the guards, and make sure to become an absolute terror to all in Skyrim, and live up to the legend of the Soul Reaper. But as I said, always do this at a higher level because you don't want to miss out on a lot of the content that is in Skyrim. And that is all I wrote, a necromantic themed warrior build that is perfect for the Halloween season, and also just an overpowered build in general. With the exception of my Bal Malagmer build, this has been aesthetically my favorite build to date, even though I've only done three beforehand, but regardless, I hope you have enjoyed it as well. So, with that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.